from our God to bring us all here so that we can enjoy this worship together. So praise the Lord for that. And as we all know, Thanksgiving, this is a Thanksgiving week, or the coming week is a Thanksgiving week, but you can see by, you know, by just looking at the bouquet of flowers here, you can tell what occasion we have, right? It's a Thanksgiving week, and we're going to celebrate the Thanksgiving week today after the service. And thank you so much, whoever brought this flower, whoever put them together, praise the Lord for that person or for those people who did this one. Praise the Lord. And I am sure that there are many reasons why we need to celebrate Thanksgiving, not only here, of course, in the United States, but all over the world. People are thanking God every day. But we ask the question, how can I enjoy and celebrate Thanksgiving if I see many unpleasant things around me? We ask that question, and I would like to invite you all again to please bow your heads in prayer before we open the Word of God. The Heavenly Father, it is always a joy worshiping alone, reading your word, praying, and asking for your guidance and leading. But Father in heaven, we always rejoice that you give us privilege, you give us opportunities, Father, where we can all come together as a church family to worship you. So we would like to continue to invite your whole presence to be in our midst. Before we open the word, O oh God, may you bless us, O oh God, with your presence through the Holy Spirit, Give us enlightenment once again. And Father, may we worship you in spirit and in truth once again. May the meditation of our hearts, the word of our mouths, Father, be acceptable to your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So how can we celebrate? How can we say thank you in times of difficulties? Looking at what's happening in the world but going closer or getting closer other than just looking at what's happening in the world why don't we look closer to what's happening to our families to the people that we love so dear the people that are just around the corner or the people that are away from us especially those who are who have immigrated here in the United States thinking about what they are going through in life, do we still have reason to say thank you to God? Or thank you to somebody who had done this and who had done this to us? My dear brothers and my sisters, the celebration of Thanksgiving, we all know how this Thanksgiving has originated, especially here, or particularly in the United States. But it is Thanksgiving is not actually a man-made kind of occasion, but it's actually originated from God. And so even the disciples and the apostles and the authors of the Bible had manifested and had actually written something about it. And so if you go back to the Bible, especially in the book of Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 40. As a matter of fact, the book of Isaiah has two divisions. The first 39 chapters of the book of Isaiah talks about, they talk about the sufferings of the Israelites. They talk about judgment on Israelites. They talk about the warnings to the Israelites. It's because of their unbelief. It's because of their disobedience to God, because of their waywardness. These chapters from chapter 1 to chapter 39 of the book of Isaiah, they talk about this experience of the people of God. But beginning chapter 14, all the way to chapter 66, these are the chapters that show us about the comfort of God to His people. So if you go with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31, actually, 
if we can start on verse 1 and then we'll jump to chapter 31. The book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 14. Let's begin with chapter 40, verse 1 and 2. And let's read it together. The Bible says, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So we know for sure that the people of God have been experiencing an ups and downs in their spiritual journey. They go back to God, I mean they, they move away from God and they go back to God and they receive all of these blessings every time they come back to God. And so 1 to 39 of the book of Isaiah, you see how the, the people of God are being warned of the coming judgments on them. But here in verse 40, this is a turning, I mean chapter 40, this is a turning point in the book of Isaiah. And it says in verse 31, read it with me in verse 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So the question that I'd like to pose today is that are you hoping in the Lord? Are you basing your hope in the Lord? And it says here, those who hope in the Lord, the Bible says that they will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That's why you see the children of God that in spite of the calamities, in spite of the challenges that they face every day in their life, you see them smiling. You see them singing. You see them studying the Word of God. And you see them serving other people in spite of that. It's because every day they renew their strength because their hope is in Jesus. Their hope is in the Lord, not on anything else or anyone else, but on the Lord. They renew their strength every single day. You know, talking about experience in life, a pastor is not excluded in the tragedies and sufferings of life. We all meet challenges along the way every day. We all are human beings. We are normal human beings just like you. And so I do believe that all of us go through a lot of difficulties every day, go through a lot of challenges every day, but every day, God gives us the opportunity to renew our strength. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, they will soar like eagles. They will soar on eagles' wings. No, and I believe that all of you have seen an eagle, probably a, a literal eagle, or probably, well, the United States has a lot of eagles. The other nations also, the other countries. But when you soar on wings like eagles, in other words, that we are not chickens. But I remember a story of a man who had a prairie chickens. You know, I thank God somebody gave me chickens for free. There are 12 of them. And so uh, my wife is becoming jealous of the chickens. She said, this, where are you? I said, I'm with the chicken. <laughs> Spending much time with the chickens. So I remember this guy who had a chicken. And one day, when he was hiking in a mountain, he found an egg. And he brought home that egg, and he put that egg in the chicken's nest. And one day, those eggs of the chickens were hatched together with that egg that he picked from the mountain. And that chick grew together with the chickens. 
and he thinks like a chicken. He eats like a chicken. He acts like a chicken. And one day there was this eagle that I was, that I was flying very, very low and trying to catch one of them. And he was so scared of that eagle. And then, one day, one day, that eagle noticed the other chick that is so different. And so he landed and he spoke. Well, this, this story is not actually a real story, but this is an illustration. He spoke to the same eagle and said, you're not a chicken, you're an eagle, you can fly like me. Those chicks, they are your, they are your prayers, they are your food, you can fly like me. But all this time, after he was hatched, or it was hatched by the chicken, he thinks like they're one of them. But one day, he got this impression that he is not one of them, that he is an eagle. And so he said he could, he could fly high just like me. He could eat those chicks if he wanted to. And so one day he learned to fly, and one day he's flying high. Sometimes, sometimes my brothers and my sisters, we think that we are chickens. But according to the verse, we can soar like eagles. Why? Because we renew our strength every single day in the Lord. Because we hope in the Lord, my brothers and my sisters. Satan makes us think that we are just like the chicks or chickens sometimes. And we are just like a whimpering dog all the time in the corner because we think that we don't have that power and strength to overcome whatever temptations and difficulties Satan would put in our way. But the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31, that those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, they will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and grow and not grow weary, they will walk and not be faint. We are not going to fail. We're not going to grow weary. Why? It's because every day God leads our way and He gives that power and strength to overcome this and then we will continue to look beyond what we see around us. How can you say thank you if you look at the war in the Middle East? How can you say thank you when people are desperate? We are so sympathetic about those people. I'm glad they didn't jump off the bridge. They just throw their kiss into the water, showing their protest and asking, I don't know who they're asking for, asking for a ceasefire in the Middle, Middle East. If we look at all of these things that are happening in the world, we can probably say that we are just a whimpering dog, whimpering in the corner, but we are not. We can fly. We can soar on eagle's wings because the God that we worship is able. The God that you and I worship is able to give you the power and strength to overcome. As a matter of fact, if you go with me in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, the Corinthians are no different human being. They're not different from us. They are also human beings just like us. Paul organized a church in Corinth. And Paul realizes and sees what the Corinthians are experiencing. If you go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, the Bible says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Every time you look at yourself, Every time you see your reflection in the mirror, do you see a change? Do you see a change in the way you look? Do you see a change in your appearance? Do you see a change in the color of your hair? Well, I see that the color is coming out. I see those gray hairs coming out. And I try to pluck them out one by one so that I can hide them. But they come out <laughs> you see you notice right that the outward man is perishing 
that the outward man is getting old and sometimes sick. Those of you who are young today, someday you're going to be like us. And those of us who are a little bit older, we know that we are perishing physically. But according to Paul, according to Paul, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Are you getting stronger every day spiritually? Are you getting stronger every day in the Lord? Or are you getting weaker? Because you think, or Satan makes us think that we cannot have that power and strength. Well, Paul says to the Corinthians, Yet inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, for our light illnesses, for our light challenges, he calls it light, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. Amen. Far more exceeding. Far more exceeding. Just, they are just for a moment, my brothers and sisters. Now, for God or for Paul, what is a moment? What is a moment for you? You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, in a flash of a twinkling of an eye, right? In a moment, First Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 to 8, and in a moment. But the moment of the Bible for us is a long period of time. A long period of suffering. Have you been enjoying your life so far? How do you enjoy your life here on earth? Your existence? Well, there are many of those. Even when they're in their young age, they think, of committing suicide. I've read, I've read a story of a man. He drove to Bay Bridge with his car. And then he jumped off the bridge, killed himself. And police discovered everything about this man later on, why he did that. It is because he lost, recently he lost his job. And because he lost his job, he could no longer pay for his bills. He could no longer pay for that car that he used to go to the bridge. And because of that, his family left him. And this guy thinks that he doesn't have any more person or he lost the people that love him so dear. That's why he went to the bridge, jump off and just killed himself because for him there's no more hope. There's no more hope. There are many people like this who are perishing. There are many people like this. That's why this morning we started about God's mission and we started about our mission to our neighbors. Again, read a lot of stories like this. They found no hope on anyone. And this guy, this person is just one of those hundreds of people who take their life because of hopelessness. But the Bible says for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. When we focus on those things, when we focus on our tragedies in life, therefore, we are going to be overwhelmed by them, and then someday we make that bad decision to hurt ourselves, and we hurt our families at the same time. But you know, if we look beyond, if we look beyond those things, we can see and we can remember what Paul says that it is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. If we don't see all of these things, if this world that we live in is a paradise for all of us, then we will no longer aim and we will no longer desire and long for that heaven to be seen and to be a reality for us. Do you think 
will you, you will still long for heaven if this world we will live in is already heaven. If we do not experience all of these things in life, do you think we still long for Jesus to come and appear in the clouds of heaven so that he can bring this far more exceeding glory to all of us? No, not anymore, because this is our heaven. But because this is not heaven for us, then we long for that thing to come. God is preparing for a place where you and I can live in no more pain and suffering. That is why Paul says in this verse, Paul says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us more, for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. We long for the eternal. Well, some people say that is just a pigment of your imagination. That is a myth. Well, I remember that song. If that isn't love, then heaven is a myth. If what God has done on the cross is not love, then heaven is a myth. And if heaven is a myth, and that is not real, then you and I today are doing what is called useless. We are doing something, we're just gathering him here, and then you are listening to what I am saying, and that's just a myth, and that is useless. All of our gatherings are useless, but that is not a myth. Heaven is real. That is why we look beyond the suffering of this life. We look beyond the challenges we face every day, because every day, we are getting stronger and stronger, and we can soar on wings like eagles each day. That is why, in spite of all these realities of life, we can still say, thank you, Lord. Right? Amen. That is the God that we worship. Amen. I love that song, Thank You, Lord. Have you sang the song, Thank You, Lord? There's a lot of songs that's entitled, Thank You, Lord. And I love the song of Laura's story, the blessing, or blessing. What if the blessings of God come through raindrops? What if the blessings of God come through all of this suffering? Because we can never appreciate something if we have never experienced something bad. You cannot appreciate laughter if you have never experienced bitterness and suffering. You cannot appreciate love if you have never experienced being rejected by someone or somebody. We cannot appreciate heaven. And we will never long to be in heaven if there's no suffering on earth. If everything is good, if everything is provided, we will no longer miss the heavenly kingdom. And that is the very reason why Paul says that this is working on our behalf. It is because God is telling us there's a better place for you. And there's a better place for you and me. That is what God is telling us. And every time we go through something, we can say, there's a better place. There's a better place. My brothers and my sisters, we can still say thank you to God because He is preparing a far more exceeding experience for all of us. He is preparing a heavenly kingdom to all of us. And if we focus only our attention to the things that we see in this world, we forget it. We, we, we have a tendency to forget what He is promising to all of us. Yes, we may say, but how long and when? How long shall we suffer? Well, it's not too long, actually. 
That's not too long. For me, I'm already more than 50 years old. If, I, if, I, if God is going to allow me to live 30 more years or 40 more years, that's a very short time. When I go to sleep, the next thing that I will see is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Right? I will not, I will not notice the passing of time when I am sleeping in the grave. 70 years, 80 years, 90 years, 100 years is a very short time to wait for the Lord. Our experience in this world is just but temporary, Paul says. But we look beyond that, we look beyond and we see the eternal. My brothers and my sisters, we can still say thank you, God. We can still celebrate Thanksgiving together. Because the God of your worship provides the strength and the hope for each and every one of us. It is my prayer that we continue to work together as a church family. I'm sure we look ahead to the future. There's still 2024, 2025, and onward. We don't know when Jesus is going to come in the clouds of God. But we all know for sure, we all know for sure that Jesus is one day will appear in the clouds of heaven. He promised that. If He promised, if the Bible promised that He is going to come for the first time, He came for the first time. He came in the flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God is going to come for the second time so that He can retrieve us. He can save us from the presence of sin and bring us to heaven. So let's all look beyond the sufferings of this world. Let's focus our attention to the one who can give us hope so we can soar on means like angels. Let's bow our heads and pray. The Heavenly Father, thank you so much. That once again you have blessed us with you. And we thank you, the Heavenly Father, for the salvation that you are providing to each and every one of us. And as we continue to look beyond the suffering in this world. We continue to look, Father, for that day when Jesus will appear in the clouds of heaven. Please continue to renew our strength every day, O oh God. And help us to say thank you even in the times of challenges in life. Thank you so much, dear Heavenly Father. This is our prayer in Jesus' name.